Hi guys, I'm Rival. Welcome to another Git video. Today we are going to be looking at Git hooks and this is part one. So what are Git hooks? Git hooks are scripts which are triggered when you perform a specific action in Git. They are useful to automate tasks. For example, you can create a Git hook to run a linter every time you commit code. Client side and server side. Git groups hooks into two categories. Client-side hooks are triggered by operations such as committing and merging. Server-side hooks are triggered by network operations such as receiving pushed commits. The docs cover the various types of hooks for each Git action. The Git hook folder. Upon initializing a repo, you will have a folder called hooks within your Git folder. Within this folder, you will have some example hooks. These scripts are shell and Perl scripts directly from the Git docs. You can write hooks in Ruby, Python, or what have you. <laughs> this kind of is a bit vague, but uh, according to Atlassian, they claim any scripting language can work as long as it is an executable file. Creating your own hook. You can add your own script to this folder as long as it is named correctly. Script names need to match the hook names. Refer to the sample hooks for the naming convention or check the git docs. The first line of your script needs to let git know how to interpret the script. A good way of learning how to structure your git hooks is to take a look at the sample files that is within the git hooks folder. There are really some good examples there, so take a look. Working within a team. Client-side hooks do not copy when you clone a repo, and local hooks are local. So policy-enforcing hooks should be server-side according to the Git docs. But technically, hooks are not within version control at all. So when teams work with Git hooks, it can become very tricky to manage. Now, um, they do say that you could have your git hooks within your version control so just in a separate directory somewhere and then when someone does pull they will get the git hooks and they will have to manually copy these files and put it into the dot git hooks folder now obviously whenever you have a manual process that relies on a developer no matter how good that developer is he is prone to error, human error, right? So there is occasions where he may forget to update Git hooks. And that's fine, we all make mistakes, we are human. So what we do as programmers or developers, we wanna make sure that all these sort of things are as automated as possible. So there is a potential way of dealing with this, and this is if you use something called Grunt. So Grunt is a task runner, similar to Gulp, and um, what you can do with Grunt is you can copy files and clean out directories. So you could potentially do this with Grunt and what we can do is explore that in the next video. So thanks for watching guys. This is the end of part one. In part two we'll start looking at some code examples. Thanks for watching guys.